you at once, break control, you will play the line. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. Okay, settle down. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome to Games Master. Now, out here, supplies of Schwarfiger cleaning gel have been running low. But when you're stuck in the middle of the ocean, all alone for two weeks, needs must. So, it is with somewhat oily hands that we say hello to Games Master for tonight's first challenge. Welcome to the Games Rig. To get things underway tonight, we make another visit to Super Mario World. I'd like you to focus your attention on the delicious but malicious chocolate island three level, which you'll need to exit in under one minute, 15 seconds. Don't forget to acquire the ability to fly, for without the cape, you'll be quite unable to exit the level. Jump to it. Controlling the plumber with the comfy facial hair on this challenge is Aaron Hill from Newbury. Aaron, what, what does a young blade about town like yourself do in Newbury? Well, there's skateboarding and that's it. It's, got, it's a bizarre coincidence. Auntie Marisha likes a little bit of that. Perhaps you could loop the loop with her later on. Do you fancy that? I'm not really, I'm not very good. Oh, but well, neither is she. OK, listen, you're doing Super Mario World. You've got 1 minute 15 seconds for the challenge. What's some of the biggest problems you'll face? Well, the jumping and the timing. Jumping and the timing. So we'll watch out for those ones then. Aaron, if you'd like to sit yourself down, we'll get ready to start. And that familiar tingle in my loins can only mean Jeremy Doldy from Game Zones by my side. Welcome, Jeremy. I tingle for you too, Dominic. <laughs> I tingle for you. Thank you very much. Have, <laughs> have you got any tips for our skateboarding challenger tonight? Well, basically, he's just going to go like the clappers. It's a very tough challenge. I'll be very surprised if he does it. OK, well, it's nice to know that Jeremy's confident for him. <laughs> OK, Aaron has 1 minute 15 seconds to get through Chocolate Island 3 level. Aaron, are you ready? Good luck, mate. Off you go. OK, Aaron's woman at 15 has started. Mario's little Mario just now. Of course, if he eats that little mushroom, he can grow big and strong, which means he can also take a hit. I don't think that's going to be that important in this one, though, at this stage, Jeremy. I thought it might help him with avoiding these turtles here if he was a little bit bigger. Well, that's true. I mean, the most important thing is for him to pick up a feather. That's right. vitally important for him to do this challenge. Because then, of course, he can fly and he can exactly. basically evade all of these nefarious exactly. nasties. That's the mushroom. That's what he needs. OK. He should pick up as a feather. He's grown big and it's, he's only had 28 seconds, so he's doing all right. He's very OK, but he's taking quite a lot of time. He needs to be zipping through this much, much quicker. He can't hang about here. Now, he's successfully evaded that tunnel there. He's been going for 38 seconds here. He's got another tunnel. He's shown remarkable control in the air. Superb. Superb control in the air. Yeah, it's a very strong position for Mario right now. OK, now 45 seconds. He's got 30 30 seconds left. There's that fair that you were talking about, That's Jeremy. That's what he needs to pick up. He's only got 25 seconds left, though. He wants to get to a little flat platform so he can get a run-up going. Of course, he's got the sudden death situation as well. One platform missed, and it's all over. OK, he's had one minute. He's only got 15 seconds left. He's not he's taken to the air as much as I thought he would he's be. He's got to get up there. He's got to get up there really quickly. He's got 10 seconds left. 10. Oh, I don't know. I no, think he's going to do it. Oh, no, he's been late. He's small. It's all he's over. dead. He's gone. It's over. Poor Aaron. Round of applause for Aaron. Like now, Aaron, you had some problems there. Talk, talk us through a couple of them. Well, the turtle just seemed to appear from nowhere. Well, I'm afraid, Aaron, you've scored a whopping 10 on the excuse ometer so we'll have to hand over to Games Master to decide your fate. That performance was truly pitiful. Off to the pit with you. Well, Aaron, I'm afraid Games Master has spoken. So it's down to the pit with you, you heinous games-playing villain. Well, unfortunately, Newbury has one less skateboarding legend to pester itself with. 
but we meanwhile can console ourselves with this week's reviews. This week, a bit of ancestral bonding occurs when we look at Evolution Games. First up, loads of funny blokes with big facial hair and horrible hats, The Lost Vikings, a madcap platform romp on your Super NES. You have three characters, each one has its own special abilities. One jumps, one shoots arrows, and one holds his shield above his head. Big deal. There's obviously been quite a good attempt to put a lot of depth in the game, but it just doesn't come off as well as it could have. The game itself is pretty large, the graphics are good, the sound is excellent, but there's not that much different to it. Evolve your band of little wee men faster than the other bands of little wee men in Megalomania, the Mega Drive version of the Amiga Classic. There's a hell of a lot of depth to it and there's some really great graphics in there. The more experience you get at the game, the more intelligent your people get. It could get to the stage where your opponents come out armed with sticks and you give them full offence with nuclear weapons. And there's a lot of humour, there's a lot of tactical play and you've got to think hard to win. Finally, come to the aid of the kidnapped cave babes in Joe and Mike. This platform game is the largest ever on the Game Boy. The characters blend in with the backgrounds too much. You can't see what you're doing sometimes. The gameplay is not bad. It's a fairly average uh, platform game. The game is tough, but it's frustrating. It's not something you're going to enjoy playing. And Mario Land 2 is a better bet. <laughs> Since Games Master began, games playing has been dominated by one man, the great Daniel Curley. Tonight's feature assesses the life of this gaming legend. I was uh, born in Manchester, a uh, hospital called Crumpsall, and six years later, I started playing video games. When we got that first joystick, I remember it well. He said to me, I'm going to be the world's greatest games player. I laughed at him, of course, but uh, well, since then, no one's been able to touch him, have they? I first heard about the UK Sega Championship through an article in a magazine. I had confidence in myself, entered the Manchester final, went to the UK final, destroyed everybody, and uh, went for the European final, which I wouldn't either. Danny successfully defended his UK Championship last year and began work as a professional games tester for Teartex. However, scandal broke out when Sega sensationally stripped him of his title because he now was a professional player. I still reckon I'm a righteous game player. Could take on Razor Abdelal at any time, who's currently the European Sega champion. So, Razor, you know my name, you know where I live, any time. Legends are created by adoring fans, so what do the people think about Danny? It's fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Maybe a little bit better than me, but it's all right. Who? He could definitely beat me. Well, I think he's uh, not bad as Evans. He's, he's like God, like he's God. Morrison all over again. Magic. His uh, dexterity, his unflagging ability to play 10 hours on end without food, light, uh, qualifies him as a major video game mushroom. Finally, Danny, what's your message to the world? If you want to be a true games tester, play hard and do good at school. If you want to be a true champion, then forget it. There's only one, me. <laughs> Daniel Curley, we salute you. A scintillating smorgasbord of reviews and features there. Now, before I pass out from the noxious fumes emitting from the bowels of Auntie Mauritius kitchens, let's find out what tonight's celebrity challenge is. Hello again. The game I've chosen for tonight's second encounter is called Summer Challenge. And within that game, I've opted for one of my favourite Olympic disciplines, the javelin. Each contestant has three attempts to achieve the longest possible throw. Uh, please provide me with something to remember. Our challenger, Simon Hadlington from Star Bridge, may have bitten off more than he can chew here because he is taking on the might of Javelin World Record Order, Steve Backley! <laughs> Welcome, Simon. All right, now, Steve, first of all, you, you are the world record holder just now. What does That's it stand right. at? The world record is 91.46. And what have you been getting on the game? Close to it, actually. I'm fancying my chances under pressure, you know, to uh, maybe pull it off. All right. Do you actually get a lot of chance to play games after a hard day's training? All the time. I do it non-stop. Uh, do you ever get a bit annoyed and throw your joystick away? 
I would do, yeah. If it weren't attached to the computer, it'd probably go a fair way, but yeah. Oh, they've got for miles. I go, I go, through, go through or through of them, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Simon, how do you fancy your chances? I mean, he's, he's, the, he's the main man. He is, but I'm hoping to do a bit of a Zelezny on him tonight, and, uh, well, he, he better watch out, that's all I can say. I think he's rallied you a little bit there, Steve. Well, listen, I, <laughs> I tell you what, listen, Simon, um, Steve needs a wee bit longer to warm up. It's quite cold out here, so if you'd like to go first, sure. Steve, if you can just uh, warm yourself up and get ready to go second. And joining me tonight is Neil West from Mega. Welcome, Neil. Hello, Dominic. Now, Neil, it's a fairly simple challenge. There's any little tips you could give them nonetheless? It's all about angle of projection and speed. If they can get as close to about 38 degrees as possible, they should be doing OK. OK, then. So, each player has three throws each. Whoever gets the furthest distance wins the challenge. Simon's throwing first. Are you ready, Simon? I'm ready. Then take your first throw. OK. okay. It all comes down to two things. It's speed and angle. Um, by hitting the button as fast as they can, they build up the speed. You can see that in the bottom right-hand okay, corner. OK, here goes the first throw, and it's a monster! 90 metres. Very good indeed. Almost the world record, I believe. Almost the world record. OK, so he had good speed there. He had 33 kmh, and then he got a good angle too. Again, remember, we're looking for about 38 degrees. That's right, we like can that. see the speed, at the, bottom, the speed at the bottom. It's slower this time. Yeah, the angle that wasn't was good either. It's not going to be as good this time, I don't think. It's still not no, bad. 88. He's got one more now. That's probably about a Mick Hill there. OK, now he goes for his third and final throw here. OK. Oh, he's getting good speed. Oh, it's a foul. Oh, it's a football. Yeah. But let's see how far it would have gone. I think the angle was a little bit high anyway. Oh, it wasn't even as high as his first throw. So, at the end of that, Simon Hardigan's furthest throw is 90.72 metres. Round of applause for Simon. Well, it looks like Steve Backley's up against it here. He's going to have to go close to his own world record if he wants to walk off with tonight's golden joystick. If you want to see how he does, join us after the break. Welcome back. You've joined us at the midpoint of a thrilling javelin contest. Simon Haddington from Starbridge has thrown 90.72 metres. Now we move on to world record holder Steve Backley to see what he can produce. Are you ready, Steve? I'm ready. I'm then ready, off ready. you go. OK, he's got to get speed oh, up. Right, he's speed to the get bottom get right corner of the, the screen here. He's got to get a good angle. How's he going to do? Speed's not too bad. Speed's not, not bad. The angle's... Well. No, the, the speed the is down. Too high. He's looking for about 30. The angle's too steep. 75, 30. It's a safe first one. I think that's all we can see. There's it. something to build from you. OK, he wants to get much faster. He really wants to hammer those buttons on there. And the remember, a lower angle. Here better he goes. speed. This is a better one. Better, better speed. speed. That better is better nice. That is going a long Steve way. Bradley is sailing out there. Oh, oh very close. Seven point very close. Two. Just three metres. A little bit more speed there. That would have broken the world record. That's right. Here, Here he goes again. for the final one. It's good speed again. Oh, the angle's, angle's too high. Too steep. Let's see it sailing out there. 83.02, a very good series of throws, but unfortunately not good enough to beat Simon Hadlington, who is tonight's winner. <laughs> well, it got quite, it got quite close at the end, there, Steve. That was a, it was a, a very safe series of throws there, but yeah, talk us but, through it. But, but that's a big word, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I. Came close down to the wire, but uh, next time, eh? I'll have him. I'm going into serious, serious training now. Two I'm... losses in one year, don't know if I can handle it. Really. <laughs> I've got to ask you in the best Jim Rosenthal tradition, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm gassed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simon, that was a brilliant throw. Not quite enough to beat uh, Steve's world record. No, it wasn't, but well, it did the job, beat the lad, and well. Yeah. Well, listen, congratulations, Simon. Not only have you claimed a whopping scalp tonight, you also go home with the Games Master Gordon Joystick! <laughs> so let's have another round of applause for Simon Hamilton and our special guest, Steve Bagley. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now it's time for Games Master to answer your pitiful cries for help in the consultation zone. Hello, 
games master. Welcome up to the helipad. How can I help fill your game playing void? On Super Mario World, I can't get out of Chocolate Island 3. What am I doing wrong? You've obviously failed to find the true exit from this level. Simply take to the air and fly beneath the first set of goalposts to find the second hidden set of goalposts further to the right. Thanks a lot. Who's next? Hello, Games Master. I'm, f I'm final fight on the Super Nintendo. I've heard this worth getting more lives. Could you tell me what it is, please? When the title screen appears, press L, B, and start to access a secret option screen where you can obtain nine lives. Got that? Yes, thank you, Games Master. Good. <laughs> then go away. Who's next? Hello, Games Master. Get on with it, young whippersnapper. On Wonder Boy in Monsterland, I can't find the last piece of the pygmy armor. Can you tell me where it is, please? If you cast your mind back to the very beginning of the game, You'll remember that there was a chest that you couldn't reach. However, now that you've got the trident, you can go underwater and swim to the isolated chest. The last piece of the pygmy's armor is now yours. Great, thanks. That's all I'm prepared to die about for the moment. My energy is on the wane. Time for 40 winks. A few more consultation members mentally massaged by the man on high. Well, I'm slightly more excited than usual, for tonight's final challenge sees the grand final of our special magazine challenge on Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Over the past couple of weeks, we've had battlers from Sega Power, Mega, Mean Machine Sega, and Mega Drive Advanced Gaming. Two of them fell by the wayside, two of them are left to battle it out tonight. So please welcome Paul Mellerick and Dave Goodyear. All right, Dave, good to see you again. OK, I'll start off with you, Dave. In the semi-finals, you've got 30 seconds on the Emerald Hill Zone. That must make you quite confident for tonight. Well, what can I say? I'm just like number one games player. Well, Paul, you were actually saying to me 30 seconds on that zone wasn't that good. Do you fancy your chances? Yep, I mean, the best man's going to win, and it's going to be me. Well, I think it's very difficult to tell between the two of you, but neither of our challengers know exactly what level they'll be playing. I know Games Master has cooked up something a little bit special. Let's go over to him now. For the grand final of my Sonic 2 challenge, I just had to go for the head-to-head -head bonus stage. The object is simply to collect more rings than your opponent in a best-of-three race contest. Do watch out for the mines, as every time you hit one, you will lose ten rings. May the best rodent win. Well, Games Master has chosen a special bonus stage. What are your thoughts on that one, Paul? Well, it's my favourite stage. I'm very confident. Well, Dave, have you got anything to answer that with? Yeah, I'm quite renowned for my thinking prowess, so I think I could be able to put this in the bag. All right, it is a much smarter kind of level. OK, Paul, if you'd like to sit there on the left and play Sonic. Dave, if you'd like to tamper with Tails on the right. You begged and pleaded for her to come back. We've complied with your wishes. Jane Goldman from GameZone. Welcome back, Jane, for this grand final. It's oh, quite exciting, isn't it? Good to see you. It certainly is. OK, well, have you got some tips for this? It's a different kind of level altogether. It certainly is. I'd say for now, um, to remember to use the whole field, you can do le loop the loops and everything. It's not just carrying along along the bottom. Mm -hmm. Also, um, it's not necessarily a disadvantage to be behind. And uh, it certainly <laughs> isn't in my life. But um, if I had to ask you to pick one of these two Nubau young boys, who would you go for? I'll take them both, don't I? But um, <laughs> no, in terms of the challenge, I'd say, um, well, Paul really impressed me. OK, whoever collects the most rings wins the stage. Win two stages out of three, and you win the joystick. So are you ready, boys? Ready, no. Then good luck to both of you, and off you go. OK, so Paul Mellerick is playing Sonic, the little blue fellow. Dave Goodyear is Tails, the little orange guy. The aim of the game is to They're collect the rings. They're vying for front place here. They are, and Tails has scored it. We can see the top corners of each screen. Tails' with rings on the right-hand side, Sonic's on the left. It's 7-4 to Tails just now. The black things are bombs. Jane, you don't want to hit them, do no, you? No, they kill you and you lose five rings. OK, so it's 17-12 to Sonic just now. Sonic picks Sonic, 25-12, to 12, that he picked up quite a few ones there. But the scores can change so quickly, Dominic, if they get hit. OK, well, let's see how they do now. It's still 25-14. to 14, and Tails, Oh, Tails jumped there. Oh, but he's managed to get in good position now. 
He's pulled it back a little bit, but now Sonic's oh, one. So close. Over there. Through the ring of 624 to Sonic. 3926 to Sonic now. Sonic wins the first one fairly comfortably in the end there. So now we got to the second stage now. Tails, oh, oh Sonic's been hit, but he didn't have any rings there, Jen. So Never that was mind. a little bit of a let off there. Oh, now Tails is the one that's making the early running here, 13 to 1. He certainly is. Just to remind you, Sonic is Paul Melanick, Tails is Dave Goodyear. Now, they both missed those patterns of rings there, unfortunately. How can they get these ones up here, Jay? You've just got to get into the swing of him, follow the rings. OK, so it's 31 to Tails now. Unless okay. a disaster happens, I think Tails is going to do this one, although Sonic's catching up a little bit now. Oh, it's very close. They missed a large portion on the side there. Oh, oh yeah, Sonic's, Sonic's got coming that in front of him. Oh, no, but that's the stage over. So it's one stage all. Here we go into the final stage now. OK, here we have Tails ahead. Sonic's letting in front of him. It's very, very exciting here, Jane. They're vying for front position. And Tails gets the first batch. Seen the Tails, but Sonic's taking the lead now. 7-5 to Sonic. It's very, very close Three here. The ring of bombs. And there's some more than that. Tails got in front there. 10 all. Oh, Tails just missed the bombs there. Oh, Sonic's got those ones. 17-11 to Sonic. They're both playing so well. It's so close. 17-12 to Sonic. Tails is going to get these ones here. 18-16. Tails is catching up. Oh, he missed some there. 22-18 to Sonic. Sonic's in the lead. 25-21. Oh, oh no, they hit. Luckily, Sonic curled up in a ball, so he missed, missed those bombs. Tails leaping in the lead now by 10. 36-10 to Tails. Sonic's got some there. And it's just two points in it. Two rings in it. 36-34 to Tails. And it's the end. Oh. Tails wins it. 36-34. So close, you wouldn't believe. But Dave Goodyear is the grand final winner. Well done, Paul. Well done, mate. Well done, Dave. All right, hush, hush, please. Paul, you really, really let Jane down. What, what went wrong? I got off to a good start, but he was lucky at the end, and he knows it as well. Well, do you know you were lucky, Dave? No, I said before when I came on that I'm just far superior, and I knew I was going to win. OK, well, as a result of our special magazine competition, Dave Goodyear from Mega Drive Advanced Gaming walks on with... The Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> so let's have another round of applause for our winner, Dave Goodyear, and our gallant finalist, Paul Millery. Well, that's it for another show. We're off now for, I think, yes, Auntie Marisha's speciality, jellied eels with lychee dumplings. So we're off to have a little bit of that, and we'll see you in seven days. Good night. The Games Master Club is open to all our viewers. For the measly sum of £11.15, you get the club pack, which includes such modern essentials as challenge stopwatches, badges, posters, fact sheets, and much, much more. To join, send a cheque or postal order for £11.15 to the address on screen, or you can call 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36p a minute cheap rate and 48p a minute at all other times. You must have permission before you make the call.